I'm the royal princess that needs protecting. Rose gives and gives, and I take and take. But I can be a leader who ruled not just for the royals, but for all citizens. Whether you wear the crown or not, you have the power to change things. Tell me a bit about um, the development of Vampire Academy, because Julie, you tweeted years ago that you wanted to do the show. So how did it finally come to fruition? I did tweet in 2015 that the world would be a perfect place if I could do Vampire Academy for television. Uh, in 2007, eight, when I read the books for the first time, it wasn't a show I think you could have done very easily for television. It was, the world is too big. The price tag attached to it is probably too high for what people were doing back then in television, especially, you know, anything that you might call young adult programming. Uh, so it's just always in the back of my head as I carried on with my life and found different ways to tell stories about vampires from different books. Um, and then two years ago, somebody just said, hey, what's the one thing you've always wanted to do that you never got to do? And my answer was Vampire Academy. And they said, great, let's do it. And uh, I got to work um, for Universal Television and Peacock and then wrangled this one into the adventure so do you want to do more vampires and she said no <laughs> i said there's there's a uh, royal intrigue palace intrigue and she said what was that again I forgot. yes I forgot hold please hold please i'm back in i'm back in <laughs> so easy just sleep I'll see you back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I knew how to like. I knew how to did. lure her. She did, and you, you really did. Though. I did because like, she, she did. was not having little it. Little by little by little, I was like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, and I was like, oh, I really did like those books. Wait, I only read the first one, and I was like, oh wait, I read all of them. Oh wait, they're great. So little by little, I was like, I'm totally in. <laughs> what do you think it is about vampires that stand the test of time more and keep just keep this interest going? You know, I. I think it's a lot of things to a lot of different people. The genre itself, you know, some people really respond to the sort of seductiveness, the 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 idea that you know you can sort of uh, be that bold, magnificent, sexy, dangerous creature. For me personally, I always ask myself the question: If I was immortal, what's the one thing I would want more than anything? And my answer is love. Because what's the point of living forever if you've got no one to, you know, stand by your side? So I'm partial to that idea of a vampire um, always seeking out their, you know, for lack of better words, their twin flame. Because you got to, you've got to have someone to walk the, the earth with if you're going to be walking the earth forever. Uh, so I love vampire love stories because it lends itself perfectly to the idea of of connecting to your family, your soulmate. You know, your whether it be a best friend, whether it be a brother, or whether it be the you know the romantic love of your life. Those are the stories that I like to tell in this particular genre. Can you tell a little bit? Tell us a little bit about anyone who influenced your characters or anyone you based it on. Oh, that's such an interesting question. Um, you know, I think. This is so weird, and I've actually never told her this, but sometimes I would look at Marguerite, who's our uh, one of our showrunners, and she <laughs> she just has this like energy about her that's so graceful and so effortless. Wow. And I remember looking at her and being like, oh, that kind of that's kind of reminding me of Lissa. Like she just has this energy about her. Like and I would sometimes watch her and try to, like see the way that I don't know she responded to things her mannerisms her tone wow and it, I have no idea yeah honestly You've never I did. Said that yeah before. I've never said it because I thought like maybe it would be kind of weird or maybe it's even weird <laughs> 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 yeah now's but, the time to bring that one but up I guess like no one really asked cool. me I also thought about Princess Diana a little bit oh yeah 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 and, yeah, yeah. And, you know how she that's a good one was graceful and kind of soft-spoken but at the same time she you know powerful she was very powerful so and kind stood yeah for what you I know, think she believed in yeah Lisa for me particularly watching like you guys i think it was like your first day or something and i was just on set watching i hadn't started yet and <clears throat> it was just a scene where you were you were someone was hurt and you were just comforting them and you were just like and like lissa's kindness is the thing that stu stuck out to me the most particularly because danny has that attribute as well she can be very <laughs> soft and she can be very <laughs> kind where rose is probably the opposite rose <laughs> I don't know about soft for her. Kind sometimes, but soft, no, absolutely not. A little more feisty. <laughs> feisty is a good word. Yeah. How did I use that word feisty. yet? 
Outspoken. <laughs> outspoken feisty. and feisty. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it makes a good team. You got to have fire with the ice, you know, balance it out. Yeah. Yin and yang. Um, what do you think the importance is of this kind of female friendship being portrayed on screen? I think that female friendships are such a big part of what it is to be a woman. And yeah. I think that, um, I don't know, it, it tells it tells a lot about femininity and, and yeah, like what it means to be a woman. <laughs> and, and feminine power as yeah. well. Like, I think, I think, yeah, women find a lot of power in their close friendships mm -hmm. and they find a lot of power in being supported by other women in a world like this and, and having sort of solidarity and that kind of thing. Um, so it's wonderful that that is kind of the very center of this of this show, of this thing, of this world even, is that at the very center, it's a story about female friendship. And I'm, I'm, I'm so psyched to have that portrayed on screen in a genuine way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Vampire Academy, like obviously it's been done as a film before. It's, this is kind of like a reboot of that. How did you work to differentiate the series from the film? Well, we made a point of not watching the film so that we wouldn't have to make any distinctions between the two. Uh, so we really just dove in wanting to be as respectful of the source material as possible while still adapting a, you know, a series that was written a good almost 20 years ago, 15 plus years ago into today. Um, we found a lot, uh, a lot to work with in those books, probably most of the things that you see at some point or another in the book series, you will end up seeing in this series as yes. well. There's a few things that kind of had to, um, you know, had to get set aside. Just we it live didn't, in a different time. Yeah, exactly. Didn't quite stand. Rose being time. a, you know, 17 year old girl with a teacher, with her teacher. Yeah, we didn't. Really we maybe had that. to like tighten up that. Yeah, age we did. Yeah, little, they're, so. little, they're closer in age. She's, there's some she's, choices. She's 18. Yeah. There's there's a, it's, a, it's a little different. <laughs> it's a little, it's different. a little tweaking here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tweaking where it matters. Put it that way. But then being able to expand it because we we were able to shoot abroad. We we shot in Spain. We got to have this beautiful, expansive world they talk about in the books. But we we got to make the visual imagery just gonzo because we got to go shoot in Europe. So that yeah. was kind of also a, a wonderful opportunity. Obviously, we can't talk too much about Vampire Academy without talking about your previous work with Vampire Diaries. Um, are there any lessons you learned from that show that you would then like took into account when you were creating the Vamp Vampire Academy? She's going to be like, yes, why don't we have daylight rings here? Yes. I know. <laughs> I know. If, only, if only daylight rings could, could they don't travel. Exist, Julie. They don't um, exist. A lot of night shoots. A lot of night shoots on this one. <laughs> um, and you'd think we would have learned our lesson by the amount of night shoots we had on Vampire Diaries in spite of the characters having daylight rings. and, and Because they're vampires. Know, because they are vampires. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you know what? I think that if I could speak to specifically mythology and magic. I think that, you know, we kicked ourselves in Vampire Diaries and, and in the originals every year as writers watching the mythology get, you know, denser and denser and, and our efforts to try to entertain and top ourselves and watching the magic need to get bigger and bigger. And you do end up kind of uh, eating yourself um by the end of a season every year and then the next season you start and you're like we're not gonna do that this year we're not gonna let magic get out of control we're not gonna have such you know so much mythology and then of course you know 22 episodes a year you just, just find yourself there again and again there. this show we were very clear that the magic exists in this world uh, these vampires in, in particular are imbued with different elemental magic, but we were going to keep it sort of very simple, very grounded in a very clean set of rules, just because this is a show about friendship uh, and about a society on the verge of change. And we didn't want a big mythology, big, especially a big magic mythology, uh, casting a shadow on already really powerful and important stories. And it stays really true to the book, that, the books yeah. that way as well. I mean, it's not there's not witches, there's not that stuff. There are sometimes a charm or this or that, but there there's really just the elemental magic, which we found to be also very beautiful. It connects you to the earth, so mm -hmm. it, it's it's it can be both beautiful and and drive story, but not yeah. you don't have to get too carried away, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, I mean, I can imagine you have such a, a universe planned in your head for Vampire Academy going forward. Um, how 
what do you see in the future? Is there anything you can tease about potential season two or anything you see yourself going forward? Well, we can't tease much because where we end season one is not where the first book of the series ends. Uh, on the page. So the audience really will not really know what to expect because we are moving a lot of pieces around on the timeline. And so there's a lot of really good surprises. Um, you will see things that are familiar to you, but you will not necessarily see, necessarily see them in the order that you're expecting. Yes. Um, I will say though, that our producer said, you know, we can shoot anywhere in Europe, right? And we said, yeah, what? <laughs> So as we enter a writer's room for a possible season two, we will be keeping that very much in mind. That in addition to this magnificent world we've created in Spain, that we do have the actual world at our at our tips, at our fingertips. Yeah. Was there any scenes on the show that you found particularly difficult to do? Such a good question. I, so funny, but I have a really hard time like getting angry. Yeah. It's like, I don't, it's just not something that comes easily to me. I feel like in my personal life, I kind of just shut down if I'm angry and there's like nothing coming out. And there's a, a yeah. bit that's like particularly angry. And I guess that would have been like the most challenging for me. Yeah, I think everything comes with its emotional challenges. Yeah. But I think for me, the physical challenges were more um not profound, but were were definitely more not an issue, but something I had to overcome. You know what I mean? Because it was freezing in Spain. It was very cold, <laughs> and the Dampiers spent a lot of time outside training. And every now and then, it would be a day where it's like snowing a couple of kilometers away, and so we're out there and we're <laughs> fighting and 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 working and doing all this stuff. But it's like you feel like you're gonna get frostbite because your fingers start to turn to ice. So the the physical challenges were notable for me, definitely. One of my final questions, it's something we're currently doing a, a project at Digital Spy called Screen Sisters, which focuses on women in front of and behind the camera. And obviously as executive producers on um, shows like this, you guys must have a very unique insight into sort of the world of the industry. Um, is there anywhere that you feel has seen the best improvement or, and is there anywhere that you feel needs to be improved? I feel like it. I <laughs> How much like time it. do we have? I know, <laughs> sure. You know Three what minutes I, I, has just been one. <laughs> I, I really would love to see, I'm, I'm a big fan of crew. I love the crew. So there's so many crew positions. There's not enough women yet in camera, especially. There's not enough women, even in grips. There's all the different crew departments, I think, because of the way they all developed and the way they came up, I understand how they sort of got to be this way. But I think um, far more women in the crew and, and behind the camera and as directors, Julie directed this season and has directed a lot of other shows. Anytime you have more women, you're just going to you're going to help change the dynamic of some of, of how a show kind of grows. And I, I think more women in crew and, and yeah. behind the scenes, producerially, but also just on sets just to see more women on sets to me would be wonderful yeah i think that what i would like to see moving forward in hollywood specifically is just a sense that while we're all coming together to make this art this this intersect at this intersection where art and commerce meet that we can create a more livable uh, exactly. a livable career here as opposed to a relentless career working in the movie business is a little bit like working in the circus and that it takes you away from your home it works you you know 12 15 16 hour days and how great if this could be the kind of business where we could both take everything we can from artists and like ourselves who are willing to give as much as they can but still maybe get them home for dinner every now and then to like kiss their kids good night I, and i actually wish. agree 100 percent with that and i think you're right women i think if there were more women there would be, be much more, more of a push that. for that for yeah. that like lifestyle mm -hmm.